Hello, colleagues. Hello, Peter. Thank you for inviting me and for your introduction. Um, and um, it's true, I will give a short uh, overview of the topic uh, about museum and uh, its possible transformation and realization uh, within uh, common task and uh, Russian cosmism. And sorry, uh, I won't. I don't want to show pictures, but hope uh, uh, it is not so important for uh, this um, presentation. At the beginning, I'd like to um, explain in three steps the logic of uh, Russian cosmism and uh, its uh, father founder, uh, Nikolai Fyodorov, because um, this will help us to understand the, the very role of uh, collecting uh, traces of life and the museum. So uh, it's relatively simple. So uh, Fyodorov um, uh, lived and uh, worked in the second part of 19th century, and uh, his ideas uh, were part of, uh, let's say, uh, its historical uh, context and um, spirit of time. Because, in my opinion, uh, he tried to connect very rationalistic, uh, positivist approach to uh, reality, uh, to science, uh, to evolution on one hand. And on the other hand, he tried to uh, solve somehow the problem uh, with the uh, disappearing of God and uh, uh, looking for new uh position of uh, uh human in uh, in reality let's say so uh and uh, uh maybe it's important to mention that uh, his approach um, could be considered less as a uh, uh, classical philosophical theory as we may uh, have in in case of uh, Western philosophy, but more like a theory fiction or uh, religious uh, theological philosophy, something like that. So it's very unusual for, let's say, normal uh, normal philosophical doctrines. But anyway, so Fyodorov uh, has uh, uh, as the main um, problem in uh, his speculation uh, problem of death. And he said that death is the main uh, is the main evil, and uh, uh, humankind should be unified in a um, common task uh, with the one goal, which is uh, uh, getting victory over death. And uh, he understood it very literally. So he, he he was true believer, but on the other hand, of course, for normal church, it was heresy because he said uh, that. Uh, there is no need in um, uh, in heaven because we we must build heaven on earth. So here we have this slight resemblance with the Marxist doctrine and some other more practical doctrines of uh, of um, this time. And um, uh, victory over there should be uh, like real uh, technological uh, achievement and. Um, um, this victory should be realized literally uh, for uh, for the whole, whole humankind. So he spoke only about humans, but uh, in his logic, um, he tries to uh, um, grasp as much as possible of all uh, living beings. So I guess we may continue this uh, uh, logic toward the, the the whole the whole universe. But anyway, in his in his case, it was only humanity. So the first step is uh, getting victory over death. The second step was um, even more important because it was about ethical uh, duty. Uh, that would have the first generation that uh, will get this uh, victory over death because um, this would be super happy generation that will long uh, that will live forever but uh, all the rest uh, 
humankind uh, who spent uh, uh, their life for this victory um, won't won't be able to share this uh, to share this opportunity of uh, eternal life and um, this was super important for him and he said that uh, uh, from ethical point of view continuation of life would be not possible uh, otherwise it uh, would not be a good world and uh, uh, the world that that uh, he desired and from this point of view uh, appeared the second important step uh, uh, for Russian Kasmism, uh, which is a resurrection. And uh, um, resurrection should be uh, absolutely democratic and full or even totalitarian for, um, unfortunately, for some um, living beings that uh, possibly would not um, uh like to share this opportunity to be resurrected but anyway uh, uh the idea was that all human beings should be resurrected and um, uh yeah and it's important that uh, it was different from more ordinary religious point of view when we have bad guys and good guys and we should uh, all, all the time think that uh, we, we we can resurrect and help uh, only good good guys uh, and bad guys should uh, uh, be in the hell so it was different so it was absolutely um, in, uh, inclusive project and uh, uh, from this uh, second step um, uh, further of um, uh started to think about the, the third one which is the problem of uh, settlement according to him uh, our planet is not enough for uh, the full resurrection of all living beings and we uh, must uh, uh, spread in outer space in cosmos so that's why we have this term cosmism, which is usually not uh, not a Fedorovian word. It appeared later, but anyway, um, I guess uh, it uh, it uh, uh, emphasizes mainly the, the third step. Yeah, the third step, this expansion to to outer space, and this is, expansion was mainly for um, for settlement of new new. Uh, generations um, and the uh, final destination of this expansion should be uh, somehow uh, transformation of the universe into one uh, organism uh, that uh, would live uh, forever and uh, at the same time this transformation should be considered as a kind of artistic gesture so it's quite close to um, to um, uh, possible uh, interpretation of this project as an artistic artistic um, ultimate artistic project. And uh, um, what is interesting here is that uh, the platform for all these uh, transformations uh, should be a museum and uh, not just a museum as it was in 19th century or before but a new uh, new uh, version of museum that Fedorov elaborated uh, why museum in general i, I guess the, the the logic is recognizable because uh, according to Fedorov, a uh, museum is uh, possibly one institution existed in 19th century uh, that tried to uh, to manage opposition towards progress and towards uh, uh, capitalistic transformations uh, he was a big uh, critic of capitalism but from uh, very unusual conservative positions because he he stand for 
full resurrection of uh, of past but through means of future and uh, technology etc etc and um, and the museum uh, as i said uh, it, it is institution that <clears throat> almost without uh, reason or maybe with educational reason uh, collects all the traces of life uh, uh that lost uh, their meaning for uh actual situation so that's like uh, all garbage all uh not important things for life and uh, this is uh, uh something that in my mind very <clears throat> resembles uh things from marxist theory as well and the interpretation of uh uh proletariat as a kind of um, garbage of social construction like uh, like uh, the main important but on the other hand that's something that we do not want to to see in the in the uh, actual actual situation and the same role a museum uh, plays for uh, cosmism and uh, these traces of life uh, uh, play uh, play uh, for uh, play this role and um uh, what what else uh, is important uh, to emphasize here um further of things that um only collecting uh, is not uh, is not enough and he um, tries to make distinguish between different types of museums and different types of um exhibitions there were uh, understanding of Fyodorov as a big supporter of uh, exhibitions but big critic of uh, museums but it's not um actually true everything uh, was uh, depended on uh, actual role of uh, one or another institution so he he thought that um um museum should be excluded from this logic of uh, capital that based on uh gets and profit and uh, uh, work against um, against it um, but uh, as i said uh, only only collecting here uh, uh, was not enough and uh, um, he thinks about um, unification of different institutions under the frame of a museum um, there are three i guess main institutions main field of uh, human activity uh, that he wanted to include into museums so the first one was uh, religious uh, institutions and the churches uh, because uh, uh, he wrote that uh, religion uh, has uh, has intuition of immortality but uh, this intuition um, does not have uh, hands and uh, works only with imaginary solutions that once upon a time in heaven after our death maybe something would happen etc etc um, he was uh, apologet of um, active version of christianity uh, uh, that it considered as a kind of um, uh, version of christianity where we do not need to wait for god that will come and help us that somehow humanity could be this god that must uh, uh, act uh, without any um, orders from the heaven etc so uh he thinks that uh, this intuition of church um, should be connected with the science because science for him and technology uh are hands through science through technology we uh, may try to achieve this goal um because this goal as i said at the beginning should be achieved in reality not an imaginary or mystical uh, or mystical world so it means that within museum 
uh, we must build uh, uh, scientific laboratories and laboratories that will make researches on archives of these uh, traces of life, which is important uh, about churches as well. So it's not, uh, it gives not only uh, intuition of um, immortality and resurrection, but uh, churches, uh, at least uh, in Russia, in pre-modernistic eras, uh, played the role of archives. I guess it was all over the world, at least in uh, Christian worlds. So they uh, registered all uh, newborns and all uh, deaths. And that's uh, almost the main points for uh, for Fyodor. And um, mm, Mm, and um, one more important institution that uh, should be included in the museum is a school, because school uh, should help people understand uh, um, th their main problem, which is the uh, uh, death of first and resurrection, and uh, should help people to uh, connect uh, uh, with each other, because he thought that uh, uh, there is not only um, division between the rich and poor people, but between, let's say, smart people and not smart people, people who uh, do not have access to normal education. So uh, uh, school was a totally important institution. And uh, we may say that the force is uh, uh, is art. If we consider museum as kind of um, independent from art uh, uh, territory in general, and uh, regarding art, um, he has uh, interesting uh, writings um, that was influential on um, later not followers. Of course, Miss but Marxism and uh, prolet cult and productivist movement, because he wrote on uh, ideas that may uh, overwhelm the borderline between uh, between uh, uh, between uh, uh, life and uh, art, and that's why, according to him. Um, just museum and just uh, just uh, uh, archive within museum uh, is not enough. I have two um, important quotes from him. Maybe I will uh, read them. Uh, one is precisely on this understanding of the role of archive. In it's kind of not super, you know, um, uh, unusual for our. Uh, our day, but it's interesting that it was written in uh, late 19th century and connected the idea of archive and um, general biological life. So one was written um, uh, in the article dedicated to library, but can be easily um, connected with the general idea of archive and cosmism and the museum. Uh, so a quote, uh, if uh, this uh, warehouse, if the storehouse is compared with the grave, then reading or more precisely research will be uh, releasing from the grave. And an exhibition will be like a resurrection. So we, we have here this precise connection of uh, uh, exhibiting practices and research practices and uh, archive on the one hand, and uh, on the other hand, this idea is about uh, resurrection and uh, getting victory over death. And the second uh, a quote is about um, is about uh, uh, is about art in general and the role that it plays within um, a museum. Um, the transition from the art of uh, likeness, like uh, art of Assembliness to the art of reality, to the art of uh, of life and real action, from the art of Ptolemy, as he um, called it, towards the art of uh, Copernican, 
should serve as a museum of all sciences connected in the frame of astronomy. That is museums with a tower and uh, in connection with the temples, uh, temple school, with a tower for observing um, stars and um, uh, of the continuum structure of, of, of the world. And at the same time, as well, for observation of uh, meteoritic ones, turning into experience and into action through the uh, transformation of uh, art of uh, armies and military into art of uh, natural science. So it was the idea that all resources that we uh, uh, spent on um, army and war and military needs, we must put into science and we must put into something related to archiving and researching um, with the goal of uh, victory over death and uh, resurrection. Um, uh, and um, um, I guess uh, this is kind of general uh, general structure of the museum and archive in um, in Fyodorov's uh, common task, and I'd like to very briefly mention some projects related to uh, his ideas. Uh, part of them were somehow uh, realized. Some of them. Uh, more speculative, but anyway, I guess they are all quite um, interesting. First of all, I'd like to say that um, he uh, tried to, uh, even during his lifetime, to somehow start this common task, common task practices, which was, of course, for uh, late 19th century, early 20th century, super uh, brave uh, decision. Uh, he spent several years in uh, Voronezh, in my native city, where he initiated six exhibitions as curators and as curator, and uh, plus um, accelerate the process of uh, organizing uh, local museum, which was quite important thing for him, this uh, organization of network of local museums. Then uh, he inspired one artist, Lev Solovyov, for making uh, the first model, let's say, of this resurrecting museum, of this universal museum. Uh, Solovyov um, lost his wife and decided to uh, build kind of permanent installation uh, in his house dedicated to his uh, wife on one hand, on the other hand, the general ideas of Fyodor. So he <clears throat> made a lot of sketches for um, like for murals of these museums um, that depicts uh, the general um, general process of, uh, of resurrection, etc. And plus he organize a, a school for children um, and um, it was um, appreciated by Fyodorov and uh, he included Solovyov in several of his texts and um, even wrote one text about possible future Voronezh Museum um, from the late 20th century where he mentioned uh, this uh, invention by uh, Solovyov. Second attempt to uh, realize a project uh, of Universal Museum um, were made by uh, avant-garde artist uh, Vasily Chikrygin, who was close to uh, Vladimir Maikovsky and some other uh, photorist uh, artists and poets. But uh, um, 
Chikrigian is less known because uh, he died very young, uh, 25, uh, 25 years old, and uh, many of his projects uh, left uh, in, uh, in sketches. But uh, another reason why uh, he's the less known figure of Russian avant-garde because he was part of uh, religious uh, wing of avant-garde, I would say. He was part of Makovic's uh, movement that unites um, people who try to find uh, another version of uh, uh, radical uh, transformation of arts within uh, religion uh, into issues. Uh, intuition and uh, <clears throat> uh, he wrote a poem on the uh, uh, temple of uh, resurrected museum and um, a lot of uh, left a lot of drawings of possible murals were depicted how scientists should uh, work all together with uh, uh, science with uh, religious people uh, towards uh, main main goal uh, and plus, uh, it was his uh, thing that he did as an artist, but uh, as a cultural activist, uh, <clears throat> he connected with another important figure of uh, his time, Nikolai Punin, who was one of the leader of uh, Futurist from St. Petersburg, from Leningrad. And uh, uh, he tried to... Um, through him um, manage uh, producing new um, institution, uh, institutions that will work as a kind of uh, um, place for a uh, new synthetic version of art and the place of possibly uh, realizing of this idea of um, um, uh, universal resurrected museum. Uh, one more important figure uh, from this cosmist uh, context is Andrei Platonov, uh, important avant-garde artist, uh, avant-garde writer from uh, Voronezh and uh, from uh, Soviet prolet cult movement. He was influenced by uh, Fyodorov and read some of his publications. Uh, and maybe it's important to mention that Fyodorov, um, during his lifetime, he, he wrote usually anonymously and didn't have uh, any substantial books. So everything um, started to appear after his death. And uh, Platonov um, used to work as an engineer and uh, as a person very close to this productivist movement uh, that try to consider, uh, tries to consider uh, the figure of artist and uh, uh, cultural producer as a producer of life, uh, but not of images of life, not of uh, uh, art of resemblance in, uh, in uh, terms of uh, Fyodorov. And he tried to transform uh, and invent a lot of things for agriculture, uh, but maybe the, the most important in the context of uh, cosmism uh, would be mentioned his novel Chivingur, uh, where he tries uh, to describe a community of people after the proletarian revolution that, li uh, that lives as um, uh, it's like uh, communism already uh, uh, in our or managed in our society because uh, of course first years after the revolution were uh, very tough and uh, uh, it was uh, years uh, it were years of uh, um, proletarian dictator and it was really really difficult to imagine that uh, it would be real um, communistic years. And uh, it's interesting that uh, he tries to uh, maybe criticize this idea of uh, universal uh, museum uh, without borders to some examples that he um, gave in, in the novel uh, where he <clears throat> depicted for instance, Museum of Revolution in the poorest, where uh, some comrades uh, try to 
somehow uh, ar uh, archived uh, the most important uh, achievements of revolutions. But uh, of course, in um, in uh, such type of archiving, it doesn't work, and it it start to be something opposite because it's not possible to you know limit your freedom uh, within the museum even if this museum does not uh, have walls and uh, i guess uh, this is something that we had in case of museums of revolution and in general in the uh, in uh, soviet projects that was of course far from actual uh, vision of uh, communistic society um and um maybe uh shortly super shortly mention pavel florinsky who was a, a colleague of uh, chikrigin from makavitz group a very brave thinker religious uh, priest and uh, christian theologist and engineer uh, who were involved into work of some committee in Soviet uh, Republic um, during the first years of revolution. And uh, he tried somehow to uh, help uh, churches to survive or to be transformed into, um, I don't know, something else, but not destroyed. And he wrote an article on uh, synthetic vision and synthetic nature of uh, religious uh, ritual and religion in general and uh, I said that uh, we cannot um, we cannot archive such type of experience because uh, it's uh, quite complex so it's because it's not only about uh, paintings or icons it's not only about architecture but it's about smells that we feel in the church, for instance, or about special choreography of a movement of people of this community. And um, uh, it's about uh, mystical transformation that cannot be easily archived and put into a museum. So it was the first, perhaps, critique of uh, this um, bad size of uh, mesiological uh, work and uh, uh, maybe the most uh, radical um, project um, in this field in my opinion is a project by um, by Bekterev Vladimir Bekterev who was uh, competitor of Pavlov, uh, perhaps Pavlov is a more known person. He got Nobel Prize for his uh, reflex theory. Um, but Bekterev uh, was, uh, uh, during his lifetime, he was comparable. And I guess, uh, in general, his achievement is very important. Uh, uh, Bekterev was a neurologist and um, very brave experimentator. He did the many projects with avant-garde artists, mainly from cinema, and he tried to invite them to work together uh, during his uh, researches. And one of the most uh, um, unbelievable projects that he um, suggested to uh, Bolsheviks uh, was the Pantheon of USSR, uh, with the main idea that uh, uh government government must establish special institution that would work as a museum and at the same time research institute that would collect uh, brains of the most important people of the time at the first level then each brain will be there like in huge archives of brain and um, uh, in addition to uh, this biological uh, substrat, they wanted to collect um, uh, psychological uh, things, uh, uh, art pieces, traces of life, etc., etc. So quite close to what Fyodorov uh, uh, wanted, <clears throat> but in a more 
already pragmatic way. And um, mm, he suggested to do this in uh, 1927, uh, the first uh, one of the first big anniversary of the proletarian revolution. And shortly after, um, he passed away. And uh, this, this idea uh, was taken from uh, him and from his institution because he based in uh, Leningrad, in St. Petersburg, in Petrograd, and the uh, government took this uh, idea and tried to establish Institute of Brain in Moscow. And the brain of Bekhterev um, went there, and brains of many, many important col uh, cultural figures like um, Alexander Bogdanov. Uh, I guess I didn't mention him, but he is important here for a cosmic context. Uh, Pavlov, uh, competitor of uh, Bekhterev. Uh, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, uh, one of the father of uh, Soviet space program and uh, person with whom uh, Fedorov met when Tsiolkovsky was young and poor student in, in, uh, in, in the library where um, Fedorov used to work. Uh, poet Andrei Bely, uh, even from recent years, uh, for instance, I may mention Brain of Sakharov, one of the biggest um, um, activist from so late Soviet period and one of the invent inventor of uh, atomic bomb and uh, related to, to, to this uh, things. Um, and many, many, many others. And it's interesting that this institution um, still um, exists somehow, but it's super closed and uh, you cannot get into it and you cannot understand what those people um, have been doing for, I don't know, more than already, I don't know, it's almost uh, 100 year. But uh, yeah, somehow it exists. And uh, uh, here, I guess I may stop. And um, if um, someone have, uh, has questions, or comments, I will be happy to react. Thank you for uh, listening.